YouTube. As some of you may or may not know, um, my career for the last uh, nearly 40 years was in medicine. I was a practitioner paramedic with the Yorkshire Ambulance Service when I finished my service in 2010 and then went on to work in the private industry up until February of this year. And the subject I want to talk about this morning, my medical training, will have some relevance in helping discuss this subject, which is why we get saddle sore and what the motorcycle industry do to alleviate it by comparison with the motor industry, i.e. cars. As a trainee paramedic, I worked in all different parts of the hospitals in Hull, including the elderly care units. And one of the things that was impressed on us was pressure sores and a thing called the water, water low score. We always check our patients before we move them for areas of soreness. Caused As by a youngster, I used to ride racing bikes. And one of the things you had to be very wary of there was that you had a really good quality saddle on the bicycle. And another thing you used to do was you used to buy expensive cycling shorts. And the whole idea was to stop you from becoming saddle sore because saddle sores affect performance, which means you're not going to win the race. If you saddle sore, car companies such as Volvo and Volkswagen, Mercedes-Benz, Rolls-Royce and all their luxury motor cars very quickly latched on to the fact that comfort was a major and key selling point for luxury motor cars. Motorcyclists, however, are always taking the attitude of being gung-ho and well, it's just a part of the hobby, isn't it? And if you just have to put up with the pain, well, I don't actually think you do. And a number of bike companies, including BMW, have, um, have, have stipulated that and said, you know, our bikes are comfy and they're made comfy. The so-called comfortable bikes, it's amazing how many of the so-called expensive, comfortable bikes, and I'm not going to mention any names, but you all know who they are. The very first thing they do when they buy one of these £20,000 mega bikes to change the saddle and that cannot be right that is a complete rip-off so you might say my god what's uh, what's upset Graham then well I've, I've been riding motorbikes since the early 80s and I have wasted a small fortune on items that make motorcycles comfortable and I think it's time that the motorcycle industry addressed it and stop ripping us all off. And it's interesting, I've noticed that quite a lot of forums where this subject is top of the list. It's interesting that the most expensive motorcycle I ever bought, which was probably my GTR 1400, had the most uncomfortable and unpleasant saddle on it I have ever had the misfortune of riding on. Interestingly, the other expensive bike I bought was a VFR 1200 and I have to say I never changed the saddle on that bike and it was all right you know so there are some companies who seem to get this right and my VFR was very nice never changed the saddle and I never needed to use things like air hawks or um, gel pads to uh, to make it comfortable I buy a cheap bike, which is my GSX 1250, and I've spent in excess of £300 on, on comfort for it. And in fairness to Sergeant, the seat does keep me comfy for probably two hours, which is an improvement on the OEM seat, which would be, at best it was 40 minutes. Uh, and even with an air hawk on, uh, I still had problems. For some bizarre reason, motorcycles have never had this image of comfort. It's always been a manly pastime and you just have to put up with the discomfort. Car companies, however, are wiser and see things differently. One of the main selling points of this car of mine is the, uh, the seating, which is heated and also has orthopaedic controls for backrests. And you can vary the height of the seat. And this one is classed as the comfiest in its class. And believe you me, it really is comfy in here. Um, and it's made a hell of a difference to my life just driving this car. I can go two hours in this, no problems at all, and then get out and have a leg stretch and feel fantastic. Heating controls for the car, easily accessible, left seat, right seat, and uh, three settings, which is something I think the motorcycle industry seriously needs to look at. 
This is the kind of nonsense we have to resort to to make motorcycles comfortable. This is the guts of an Airhawk saddle and the uh, cover that goes over the top of it. So you go out and you buy a sexy looking motorbike and then you put this bloody thing on it. I mean, really? Absolute garbage. And you pay the motorcycle industry, well this one is a cheap one and it costs 90 quid and if you buy the neoprene one you're looking at about 140 quid. And as you can see on this one look, the cat's been on it. This is what this is, right? And how she hasn't burst it, God alone only knows. So, you know, you could end up having to buy another one of these. Just to explain how this thing works, uh, this is exactly the same kind of uh, piece of equipment you would put into a wheelchair to prevent pressure sores. And it has air pockets. You don't fully inflate it. And it's that's what happens. You get air channels down the middle here, which keeps your backside cool. And then you get different pressure points across the seat of your backside. So you're never sitting on the same piece of cheek. And so you don't get the heat build up and you don't get the moisture sweating. And that stops the chafing, which stops the soreness. But what it doesn't stop is the orthopedic issue which is downward pressure on your spine and on your wrists which unfortunately is probably a part of the type of bike you ride be it a sports bike or a cruiser or a, a bike like mine, a street bike So I've, I've put a picture up of the old saddle which you'll have just as, have seen and this is the replacement saddle and this is the sergeant saddle which I put on the bike at the beginning of this year I've now used it for the best part of eight months. It's a good piece of kit, but it's not perfect. And I still, after two hours, get sore. Okay, so this is where the medicine comes into it. I'm an extreme uh, example of this problem. I have back fractures and an underlying orthopedic illness, which is ankylosing spondylitis. So I am a big test for any saddle. So, but I still suffer with the same problems that a person with a normal back suffers with, and that is um, pressure sores. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so the moment you sit on the bike, you're putting downward pressure on your spine, on this bike. You can relieve it sometimes by leaning forward, but then you're taking the weight on your wrists. Okay, on this bike, behind me here, there's a pad, which my, the base of my, back, a very base, my coccyx is sitting against it, it are cushioned so that I'm not putting pressure on my tailbone and I think this is why this sergeant's seat works so well. With the Airhawk saddle what that does is I don't think it causes, it, I don't think it, it relieves any of those problems, I think what it does is it relieves the heat moisture problems and because you're sitting on a um, uh, you know a cushion of air but what I would say that saddle is inherently unstable and if you don't inflate it correctly you find yourself you feel like you're rolling off the bike on it and it isn't a pleasant feeling also I found my air hawk was only comfy when I was wearing leather jeans if I was riding around in my ordinary canvas jeans denim jeans whatever these things are made of I very quickly became saddle sore and the reason is these ordinary jeans have pockets in the back and that's the other issue creases in your clothing. Creases in your clothing dig into your skin and add to the effect of the pressure that cause uh, bands across your, your skin which become red and then they become sore and added to the fact that your bones and everything start to stiffen up because you've been sat in one position for too long then you have the problem. So the issues with these seats is motorcycle seats need to be better quality they, and I also think heated in some instances would be a good thing. The moment I turn the heating on in my Volkswagen, it's just the most comfortable place in the world to be. And I'm now wishing when I bought this Sergeant that I'd gone the extra 50 or 60 quid and had the, the heating element put in the front um, rider's seat. If you ask me whether I would buy my uh, Airhawk saddle again, the answer is definitely not. No, it was a waste of money. Um, used it, wasn't impressed with it, it doesn't add to the look of the bike, it takes away from it 
and yes it is comfy yes it does do what it says on the box you can't say anything about that it, 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 it does make long journeys good but I don't think it's the answer would I buy my sergeant saddle again yeah I would definitely would I spend any more on a saddle I think I've spent enough I think they make enough profit out of us I think 350 quid for a saddle is more than enough and I, I've been told by subscribers that they've paid two and three hundred pounds more than that and not, and not necessarily got a better piece of equipment. Do I think the motorcycle industry needs to address it? You're bloody right I do. I think, I think they've been getting away with murder and it isn't just about um, saddles, it's about basic accessories. I mean the price we pay for some of these bikes, you know, we're getting into five figures and they reckon it's in the technology, they reckon it's in the materials they use well, I've got a £20,000 Volkswagen and it'll beat any of these bikes into a cocktail for anything you want to say. It's more usable, it's more practical. Yeah, and I know you're going to say, I'm missing the point about riding bikes. No, I'm not. It's still a machine and it's still something we want to use on a regular basis and we want to be comfortable and safe while we're using it. And comfort and safety go hand in hand. How many advanced riding courses do you go on and they say if you don't feel comfy, if you're becoming fatigued, stop riding. One of the biggest causes of rider fatigue is uncomfortable motorcycles and I think it's time for something we've done about so it. So just to come to a conclusion on this subject, because I do feel quite passionate about it, I think it's long overdue that when these modern motorcycles are produced and developed by the big motorcycle companies, they take a long hard look at the quality of the seating that is supplied with the motorcycle and uh, you know if you buy a 15 to 30,000 pound motorbike you get a saddle appropriate to the cost of the machine and likewise if you buy something like my Suzuki why don't Suzuki just give you the option to buy an economically friendly and useful saddle even if it means paying for it as an optional extra just say to you look we've got an OEM saddle or you can have this package which will add to it which is only like the comfort packages you get with motor cars for too long now we've been going into motorcycle uh, uh, showrooms and you know you, you get the shiny bike syndrome and the racing bike syndrome and all that other garbage that goes with motorbikes and you end up coming out with something that might be very nice but isn't completely practical uh, and at the end of the day you know this is our hard earned cash we're talking about and to have to go back within six weeks of buying a bike to replace the saddle because it's not fit for purpose I think is unacceptable anyway the whole point of this um, article I've done is it's a talking horse it's to get people to think about you know what they're spending their money on are you happy with what you've got or do you do you feel like me that it's high time that the motorcycle industry got its act together and and supplied motorbikes with you know with with proper saddles that are you know with options to heat them and and also that are comfy and that do the job so what do you think bye for now